On the left side here, we have our toolbar. Now the toolbar has, as it sounds like, the tools that we're gonna be using, or at least a lot of them. Um, also down at the bottom, we have our color picker, which we'll be talking about in a later video. One of the main things I wanna point out with the toolbar is that a lot of these tools actually have additional tools underneath them. And you can tell which ones those are by the ones that have a little white arrow or triangle in the lower right corner of the button. So for example, if I come here to the lasso tool, and I see that little white arrow down there, if I just click and hold it, it pops out to the side and I can see that underneath that there's the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we're going through these, a lot of different tools that are hidden here. Now if I were to select the magnetic lasso tool, for example, that would now be the one that shows up at the top. So this is now magnetic lasso tool and I would need to click and hold to get back to the regular lasso tool. Another thing that we are going to use a lot in these videos and as you're using Photoshop in your careers is going to be keyboard shortcuts. Most of these tools have keyboard shortcuts associated with them and the ones that you use the most often it's going to be well worth your time to memorize those keyboard shortcuts because it'll save you a lot of time. Now to find out what the keyboard shortcut is for something all you need to do is just rest your mouse on it for a sec and it'll show you. So that's what's called a tool tip, that little yellow thing that popped up. That tells me that that is called the move tool and to the right of that you can see it says the letter V. That is the keyboard shortcut. So I don't need to hit shift or option or command or control. All I need to do is just tap V and I will switch to the move tool. Now some of these, if you click and hold, you'll notice that they all have the same keyboard shortcut like LLL for the lasso tool. If I go down to the gradient tool, for example, you'll see that under the gradient tool, I have the paint bucket tool. And they all, all three of them here, we've got G's. Well, I can cycle through those. If I just tap G, so I'm gonna tap M, so I'm on the move tool, or sorry, V, so I'm on the move tool. Now I'm gonna tap G, and I'm on the gradient tool, if I keep tapping G, it's not gonna do anything, just stay gradient. But if I hold Shift G, it will cycle through. Oh, wrong button there. So Shift G, now I'm on the paint, on the paint bucket tool. There's the gradient tool again. So shift and then the keyboard shortcut will cycle through any of the tools that share a keyboard shortcut. So same thing if I go shift and L, I'm now on the, on the uh, polygonal lasso tool. Shift and L again, I'm now on the magnetic lasso tool. So those are keyboard shortcuts and the toolbar. Again, we will be using them a lot uh, as we work in, in here in Illustrator, or in uh, Photoshop. Now, Another thing I want to make sure that we're familiar to do is to do copying and pasting, or cut, cutting, copying, and pasting, I should say, because those are something that you'll use quite often. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to draw a little rectangle here. Don't worry so much about how I did that. We'll be working on those in later videos. Now, if I want a copy of this rectangle tool, there's a couple of things I can do. One, I can click it here, go up to edit, and I can just say that I want to copy it. And the keyboard shortcut is over to the right. On a Mac, it's Command C. On a PC or a Windows computer, it is Control C. Now, this is the same keyboard shortcut that we see in uh, Microsoft Word or all sorts of basic applications, so there's a good chance you're familiar with it. If I click on that, and then I come up here again and I say that I want to paste that, which is Command V or Control V on a Windows computer, then it actually pastes it and I've got two of them. Well, we need to actually, sorry, let's set up a new layer, which again, don't worry so much how I'm doing that yet. We will be learning that in future videos. But now I've pasted it and I've got two of them there. Another way, and the way that I personally think is, is going to be the, the most convenient to make copies of things, is by dragging a copy off. Now to drag a copy off of something, all you need to do is hold down Option on your keyboard or on a Windows computer, that's Alt, and you just hold down Option and drag, and you see how I now have two of them. Hold down Option and drag, and I now have two of them. So, again, in order to drag a copy off, just hold Option or on a Windows computer, that's Alt, or you can use the, the commands up here, uh, cut, copy, and paste. Now, another shortcut that we want to make sure that you know is how to undo things. Let's say I decided I actually didn't want those three. Well, I've got up here under Edit, the Undo. Actually, the last thing I did was Move It. So if I undo that, it'll undo the move that I did. Now, if I want to hit Command-Z again, it will redo that move. So Command-Z is the keyboard shortcut or Control-Z on a Windows computer. Every time I tap that, it's just going to toggle between undoing it and redoing it. If I want to step back further, like undo the last thing before that, 
Under edit, I have step backward, and that is option command Z or alt controls Z on a Windows computer. And I've also got step forward, which would take me forward multiple steps, which is the shift instead of the option. So I'm gonna hold option command Z, and I'm gonna just keep undoing until I'm back to one rectangle again. So that is undoing. Now let's talk about saving documents. Uh, it's very important to save your documents while you're working on them. Obviously, if something goes wrong, you don't want to lose all the work that you've done. Um, the default file format for saving in, in Photoshop is a PSD file. And so it's called format. The format is Photoshop. The actual file extension is PSD. Now the nice thing about a PSD is it maintains all the information about your file, all of the layers, all the edits so that you can go in and you can make changes um, later on, which is often very important to be able to do. So you want to hang on to your PSDs. Even if you save it out as a, as a JPEG or a TIFF or some other file type, you still want to hold on to the PSD because that's kind of your master copy that has everything you need into it. Other options I have here though, I can save this as you can see, JPEGs, PDFs, all sorts of different uh, options for changing, saving this into a particular file format. Another way that I can save for a specific file format, if I want, if I know I'm going to use this image on the internet, I can come up to file and I can say that I want to save for web. And this gives me controls for making an optimized file and I can choose that be a, a GIF or a, or a JPEG or a PNG um, and that will be optimized for the internet, meaning it'll be as small as it can be in maintaining high quality so it'll load quickly. So that is the basics of the interface and a couple of commands in Photoshop. In our next video, we'll be talking about some of the basic tools that you'll be using when working with Photoshop.